Hindu Analysis Editorial by Rathod Ayer. Thank you, Rathod Ayer. Really took help of the Hindu Analysis to enrich my content. Hindu Analysis articles. Rathod Ayer. Hindu Analysis Editorial. Hello and welcome to Rathod's IS Academy. Today in this session, we are going to see Canada fights of 18th June 2024. So let's get started with our discussion. So here I'm taking Delhi edition. So whichever edition you are having, you can go to that. Okay, so there will be no problem with which edition you are dealing with. And one thing here is always I'll be saying you about this importance of syllabus and as well as PYQs every day. So at least if I'm saying every day, some students, they might be getting some change in the attitude towards UPSC syllabus and as well as PYQs. So if someone, at least 10 students, they will be changing their behavior or else if they are understanding syllabus and PYQs, then that will be making you to move in a right track. So first one is you have to know your UPSC syllabus. It is a guiding light. It is like Bible. You should not leave that. And next one is PYQs. Previous year's questions is also very important. So if you know this PYQs, then only you can understand how questions are coming from current FIs. So in which format they are giving your questions. So all these things that you can know if you go through this PYQs. Okay, let it be. So now let's get started with our analysis. And this is front page. So first important article is nine killed in rail accident in Bengal. So how can we connect this article? So even in our morning strategy classes also, I discussed about this topic with our students. And they said like, how can we connect with this uh, different subjects also? I got answer from our students itself. So I will let you know for you students. So first one is, it is talking about rail accident. This is about rail accident, right? So we can connect it with our GS paper one under geography. So in geography, in human geography or economic geography, you will be studying this chapter called as transportation. So which is the chapter transportation. So in this transportation, you will be knowing about different means of transportation. For example, we have railways, we have roadways, waterways, airways, and as well as pipelines. So here we can connect with railways. So what you have to read from geography point of view? Again, there is one question, right? So from railways, you have to know about different types of railways. For example, we have broad gauge, broad gauge, we have meter gauge, narrow gauge, like that you have to know these different types of railways that will be dealt by your geography sir. And next subject is we can connect it with GS paper under disaster management. So in disasters, we have two types of disasters. So one will be natural disaster. So which is example of natural disaster? Tell me uh, Venkat, example of natural disaster. Floods, earthquakes, volcanoes, tsunamis, etc. And another type of disasters are man made or artificial. So, here we can add this rail accident as one of the man made disasters. So, here you will be saying, like, what are the measures can be taken and how can you address this issue and what is this post disaster management like what is rehabilitation how we can go for reconstruction part okay it is from your gs paper 3 disaster management and next one is from gs paper 3 again we have economy so in economy you'll be studying about infrastructure so in 2024 there is one question regarding this geography come economy point of view they gave airports on one side and they gave whether they are greenfield or brownfield airport okay so here if you're talking about infrastructure you have to know whether it is greenfield or brownfield greenfield means entirely new project brownfield means second hand so already we have airport there we are going for extension like removing of roads or removing of things or adding something that will come under brownfield 
so here in this railways also if you are going for modernization of railways it will comes on a brownfield or else if you are coming up with a new train that is for example bullet train from mumbai to ahmedabad so that will comes in a green field so here in that point of view also you can get question and next especially you have to know one thing what are the causes for increased frequency of rail accidents in india okay you have to know about increased frequency of rain, uh, rail accidents is happening what are the causes behind this and next one is you have to see what are the measures and one more thing is students if you want to get the data of everything like from geography from disaster management from economy infrastructure everything point of view we are going to launch current affairs course soon so in our current affairs course you will be getting daily pdf so what are the dimensions i am giving here so you will be getting detailed notes of that dimension so that believe me 60 to 70% of your gs will be covered in that course okay and you will be having practice questions of prelims on weekly base and you will be having weekly current affairs compilation monthly compilation also and there we are not only covering this hindu but even other sources as well okay that will be very helpful for the students and you know that in 2024 there are good chunk of questions that you got from this current affairs so if you have good knowledge you might be clear in this examination so current affairs is very important for both your prelims mains and interview so try to take that course okay so we are going to come up with the details evaluation and detailed things about that course soon okay okay now let us see this article in detail so i am going to give just what is the primary reasons and what are the measures that you have to take so if you see one important reason here is whatever the infrastructure we have there are some deficit means so whatever the rail or where this rail trains will move on they'll move on tracks right so what are the tracks we have we don't have proper tracks and even you see trains will be moving over the bridges if there is any river or anything any road is there okay so here whatever the tracks we are having bridges and overhead wires and rolling stock so they are not maintaining properly in india will you accept will you accept it venkat yes right so there is lack of proper maintenance and even those lanes they had not constructed recently they were like british period times 18th century 19th century and 20th century so this is also one important reason that is one of the important cause for this frequent rail accidents in india and next one is much of this infrastructure had been built during 19th and 20th century okay so they are not upgraded as per our modern standards so because of that even the speed of our indian railways is less compared to of other country speed like china japan and next one is even there are some human errors human errors means nothing but errors of errors or the mistakes made by humans for example for railways to check the nuts and actually the problem here is during winter and summer season so there will be expansion contraction will be happen because they are made up of metal so here we are having a separate staff and these staff will be recruited by railways regularly but these people they are who are responsible for the operation maintenance and managing of trains tracks so they are like fatigue they are become very lazy so i want to talk reality here so on the railway tracks the people who are working so they will be not at all focusing on operation and they will not going for regular checks also right so because of this there will be some problems sometimes they will get by crossing of trains and that will leads to collision okay and next one is also there may be wrong signaling sometimes okay instead of showing red flag they may be showing green flag instead of green flag uh, they may be showing red flag so sometimes wrong signaling because of human error and also sometimes of uh, miscommunication and over speeding of trains and over leaking defects of hazards so these will be some of the examples that are leading to this increase or frequent rail accidents in india and next one is signaling signaling failure so yes we have signals so actually if you are moving on road also we will be having traffic signals in the same way for train also they will be having signals sometimes here there will be failure of or working of this signals 
right so it is also one important because of some technical glitches because of some power outrages okay and next one is unmanned level vehicles or crossings that means in the morning class i said venkat do you remember yes there is a railway track okay and there is a road here so this is road and this is railway track but here there will be no stoppings and even there will be no man who is guarding that track where there is road so if there is no one who is guarding or if there is no stop here what happen the train will be moving with a very high speed so if any vehicle is going it will be hitting is or no so this will be the one important reason and most of our railways they do not have proper guarding itself so there is unmanned level crossing and next one is what is the need now so what can we do what are the measures the first one is we have to conduct some thorough investigations so whenever there is any accident which happens so we have to go for investigation so after investigation only we can understand exact problem why what happened and what led to what so we need thorough investigation so that we can identify the root cause of the problem and as soon as we can determine who is accountable that is who is the responsibility so who can take the responsibility for that so and so accident so when we know only the root cause we can decide that and as soon as we have to focus on or even we can strengthen that means to strong to make stronger the maintenance practices like if there is any need of uh, infrastructure upgradation so we have to fo focus on that or if we can use science and technology yes we have to incorporate that understanding okay and we have to focus on proper maintenance of track okay there there is a need of science and technology so we have to take self uh, help from other countries also which are having some advanced technology which can be used for proper efficiency proper maintaining of this railway track and next one is not only we have to focus on technology if you want that technology we need funds so we need to allocate sufficient funds for the safety related works of railways so an important reason why there is increasing of accidents because there is no proper funding right and even i said like we have passenger trains and freight trains so they will be getting more profit on freight trains compared to that of passenger so even they are getting very less amount of money how can give the salaries for those staff is yes or no so there will be huge amount of people they will be working in large human source or there and uh, here railways need to give salary for them and they have to maintain everything so they need some efficient resources so central government need to allocate proper funds for this railways clear and next one is we have to enhance even staffing and even regularly based if you are getting new technology so based on that technology we need to provide proper skilling proper training even though if you are getting good technology but if the people who don't know like how to operate them and how to use them then what is the use so we need to upgrade skilling or we have to go for training programs with the people based on the technology that we are getting so that we can reduce human based errors and next one is we have to implement advanced technology as i said so when we are using advanced technology we can focus on some areas like safety monitoring we have to monitor the safety of railways and as well as safety of people together and next one is early detection of faults if there is any fault so before train has reached there so that should be identified and that should be rectified or else proper signals can be given to that so and so train that you have to stop there so there is some problem here karke right and next one here is we have to focus on real time decision making on the spot if they found there is any fault so they have to take the right decision because how many bogies will be there in one train venkat any idea have you counted like whenever you are in child yes tell me approximately yeah you didn't remember so at least tell me some guess more than 10 you don't was really train you don't know even how many number of bogies will be there wow very rare <laughs> so normally there will be more than 10 to 15 bogies okay so in one bogie how many members can sit any idea 
yeah so if you calculate for this 10 to 15 bogies how many people it will be around 1000 so here it is the responsibility of railways because many people who are traveling in one train and next one is we have to prioritize on safety safety is very important here safety of both people and as well as both the infrastructure okay so that thing that we can do and so this is the only article which is important from your front page of Delhi edition so if you are leaving the city page no need and states page Yes, one important problem that we can see is IIT Karakpur student found dead on campus premises. So I think you might have known about IITs. So after intermediate, you will be entering into this IITs, right? So now the famous IIT is IIT Karakpur. So here the issue is student, they found dead. So where we can fit this article, Venkat? IIT comes under which education? Which education? So I am not asking science. So we have preschool, school. In school, we have uh, like primary, secondary, intermediate, next degree, next PG. So here we can say this article from GS paper to under education, right? So in education we have primary, secondary, etc. And next one is higher education. So higher education is nothing but degree and PG. So IIT comes under which education? Higher education. So here there is death of student. That means you can connect with this topic called as problems in higher education and it's entirely means based topic understood so can you tell me you are from jndu h okay so tell me some important problems faced by students in higher education institutions are you stayed in hostel or you day scholar day scholar okay so you might have friends who are staying in hostel so tell me now what are the problems you are facing in hostel that is linked to suicides yeah pressure so i want facts and reality now tell me so pressure from what okay there is study pressure next come on i want at least four to five from you because you came from that stage and you are in that stage you know better than me yes tell me study pressure Online students, please tell me what are the reasons for the increasing of suicides in higher education? Depression for what? Depression for what? Okay, okay, I will add this word depression. Next. Number three. Fast, fast. Only two problems, no more problems. Ragging. <laughs> In IITs, I'm saying. Yes, ragging, pressure from seniors. Yes, can you tell me? Others. So what you people will find the problems in education institutions, I'm asking. Your problems, not my problems. I came out of that stage long ago. Harassment by seniors, like that. You have to know exactly. So it is not the first issue. So many a times uh, this kind of issue that had happened, like increasing of suicides in this IATs. So you have to know what are the problems. And if you are a DCP, what are the steps that you are going to take? So here you have to think that you are in a position of DCP. And what are the steps or measures you are going to take to address this type of issues. So in this way you can get case study. Clear? 
and so in this page I didn't found anything important. Okay, here you have to know about this word poke. So already it is not a new topic. And here you can see about IMD issues, yellow alert to two districts in Kerala. You have to know about color code. Like we have yellow code, green code, and as well as orange code and red code. So what are this code and what it signifies? So if you see red means very high rainfall. So like that you have to make a table. Keep IMD color codes. On one side color and one side what is significance. Okay, clear? And next here this image is important. So this image is talking about Rushikonda beach. So you have to see where is this beach located. It is in coast of AP and it is famous for Aribada. So Aribada is nothing but mass nesting of olive redly turtles. That is the thing that you have to know. And next topic is trade repairs. So here we are going to see about exports. So recently we discussed one article in our Hindu that yes, there is increased exports of country, but even though there is now trade deficit. Okay, so we can connect this article only from our GS paper three under economy point of view. And even we can connect with GS paper to under international relations. So here you have to know exports, especially I want to give you some dimensions. So what are India's exports? And what are the reasons for trade deficit? And next one is, how can we promote our goods? So this topic is important from this area. And you have to see in international relations. So here, whenever we are coming up with a relation with any other country, so we'll be dealing with economy part, right? Ma right, Venkat? So areas of cooperation, like economy, trade. So if you want to increase your economy or exports, we need to have free trade agreements, yes or no? And even you can see about role of WTO in ensuring of international trade markets. Okay, so all these are interconnected. Are you getting? So all this that you have to know. And now let us see this article in detail. So actually why it is in news? So after a rough 2023 to 2024 data, so it says that India's merchandise exports tanked means nothing but increased 3.1 percentage to around now it is 437 billion dollars trade. Okay, last two months they have been recorded an expansion in outbound shipments. Okay, last month we discussed that yes there is increasing of our exports, but even though we are having trade deficit. So what should be done to improve our export? So this is the main point of our discussion and you have to know what are the steps can be done. So first one is cost optimization. So why the cost will be increased whenever the factors of production, what are they? Land, labor, capital, entrepreneur. So whenever the cost like land, uh, power or capital costs are increasing, so there will be automatically decreasing of exports. So because of this, we have to go for decreasing of this operational cost first. And this one is we have to improve our efficiency. So we have to encourage economies on a scale that can significantly reduce the cost disabilities. And even we have to improve our competitiveness. So whenever we are focusing on infrastructure, whenever we are decreasing the price of the market, the price of the goods in the market, automatically they will be having more demand. So I explained about your rice in micro listing of topics. So the same thing that you can apply here. And next one is labor flexibility. So we have to streamline labor laws and we have to ensure flexibility so that our Indian companies, they can become competitors to foreign companies. 
and whenever they are becoming a competitor they will be increasing their exports and as one is msme support so what is msme micro small and medium enterprises so msme they will contribute to overall competitiveness okay we have to focus on even msmes and for this msmes we have to give the support so that they will be becoming like improve, improving of this competitiveness and next one is market access via trade treaties as i said so whenever we are having a relationship with any other country so we have to improve our free trade agreements so that we can increase our international market access and next one is quality and as well as technology focused so we have to invest on this r and d we have to invest on adopting of new technologies as i said earlier and as well as we have to promote brand india so here the government and industry bodies they need to come together and they have to collaborate and they have to promote brand india on the global stage so for achieving this yes we need proper cultural heritage skilled workforce and as well as innovative capabilities and interact and also we need international buyers so if you are having all this yes we can attract easily and next one is china plus one strategy so do you have any idea about this china plus one strategy venkat what is that mass not not this not about mass wave production so actually you know that in china so do you know about difference between india goods and chinese goods chinese goods if you if you see anything we will be getting duplicate in china chinese goods china phone china's things so here for example there are many companies they started in investing in this china okay so but now what happened there is increasing of cost of production for that companies in china so now they started to shift towards countries where there is less cost of production so here india is having a chance of getting this okay so this is called as china plus one strategy so it will be encouraging this mnc's multinational companies to diversify their manufacturing base and also away from china's essential okay so in this way here we are focusing on china plus one strategy and next i want to give you one main question so please do make a note discuss the potential and challenges of enhancing india's export competitiveness in the global market can you see or not next one is you have to know about uh, sectors with high export potential and strategies to uh, leverage them for sustainable economic growth try to write an answer for this question guys online students please take down then when cut online students please make a note down of this question then everyone okay yes now let us see next editorial it is about constitutional respect not be reduced to optics so here you have to know about some words so here they talked about parliamentary democracy they add about uh, article 74 and they added about more uh, constitutional morality and even uh, they are uh, they said about first schedule and second schedule So all these are important from your polity GS paper two point of view, and we are going to see this article in detail. So what is this about? So we talk about our constitution itself. It provides for which type of democracy? Parliamentary form of democracy. Clear? So our constitution which provides 
parliamentary form of democracy that means executive is responsible to legislature so this is a statement which came many a times in your examination your upsc prelims so what this parliamentary form of uh, democracy means or for parliamentary form of, of government means so in this way you can get a question and next one is it is also known as cabinet government or responsible government so why we are calling it as responsible because here we have executive executive responsible to legislature so again the another name of this government is responsible government next one is cabinet government and even one more name that is west minister model of government okay and if you see articles article 74 and article 75 and this article 74 is directly given i shown right so you can see there and it is at central level and the state level we have to add 89 so one tip venkat whenever you are reading uh, articles of constitution so you have to compare central provisions and state provisions for example in central government uh, we have president in state we have oh, governor and in the central we have prime minister state chief minister so you have to add just 89 number so that you will be getting articles of union and state so if you know union if you add this at an 89 number you will be getting articles of states provision okay this is very important and what are the features of our parliamentary system so we have harmony between legislature and executive because they are responsible executive responsible for legislature and even we have heads of state so in the heads of states we have nominal head and real head nominal head will be president just for stamp and here we have real head who is a real head who is a real hero prime minister now modi ji yes okay and now we are also having one more important feature that is responsible government so government is responsible to parliament and parliament is holding accountableness of this so and so government right and even we have cabinet system so do you know about cabinet anyone cabinet so we have council of ministers again we have cabinet means what not opposition not at all okay i'll tell you here we have poi president of india so below him we have prime minister real hero under his we have council of ministers so yesterday we discussed about council of ministers so how much percentage 15 so in this council of ministers so here pm will be selecting some important ministries and he will be forming a small branch this small executive branch who are very close and very important departments important ministers into a small cabinet okay and this cabinet which is entirely responsible for day to day administration of cabinet of uh, for government yeah 36 ministry okay and this cabinet is again headed by our prime minister and leader of party who is the leader of party or coalition party now who is who is the uh, leader of this cabinet obviously our modi ji and next one is party discipline so in our parliamentary system of democracy so it is normally having a strong party discipline because we are having whip idea and do you have any idea of whip 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 means for example If this is parliament sessions are going on so in sessions i said like if any bill to be passed in house they will go for ddv debate discussion and voting so in this voting and in this to maintain the uh, quorum quorum is nothing but the numbers of people the mps so for everything so there will be whip whip will be nothing but the person in that so, so political party who will be guiding the other members of that political party to follow the things like whether you have to vote towards s or against or like how much members they have to present in that house whenever the discussions are going on so like that in this parliament system yes we are made in this pa party discipline it is also an important and famous and uh, very unique feature of our parliament system of democracy okay and i said there is one more word which is given that is constitutional morality right so what is the meaning of this constitutional morality it is nothing but the principles and values so you know moral means nothing but it is related to values 
So these are the principles and these are the values which are saying about our constitution and they will be guiding our government like which actions they have to take that is called as constitutional morality. So for this morality also we are having some important pillars on which this constitutional morality is dependent. So first one is constitutional values. Okay, so we have some constitutional values. Even in our preamble, which is an ID card of our constitution, we have this words like justice, liberty, fraternity, equality, secularism, okay, secularism and dignity. So these are some important constitutional values. So based on that, they will be guiding government to take some actions. Clear? And next one is rule of law. So supremacy of law is very important. So based on that, and next one is democratic principles. Okay, so for ensuring of proper functioning of representative democracy, citizens, they need to have a right to participate in decision making process. Okay, because we have to make them accountable, representative accountable. And even to ensure participatory democracy. Participatory democracy means people need to pro, uh, participate in this process of making of laws, implementation, etc. So these are also one important things. And as well as you know about these fundamental rights, they are protecting and they are guarding the people. For example, we have right to life and personal liberty. And that right to life is the third time the question which came directly in your UPSC 2024. And next one is we are also having one more important principle that is separation of powers. So here we have three organs of state. One is executive, legislature and judiciary. So they have their own powers. They have their own limits, right? That is the thing which mainly given. And even checks and balances. So all these are the important principles on which this constitutional morality depends. Clear? Okay, and if you move on to our Hindu page, so this article is very important. It is talking about 46th Atlantic Treaty consultative meeting recently held. And you have to know what is the agenda they talked. And even you have to know about Antarctic Treaty for sure. Okay. So let me give you the dimensions. So it is talking about Antarctic Treaty. 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 So, if you are talking about any treaty which is in use, you have to know some things like what are the provisions of this treaty. And second important one is you have to see how many countries which are part of it, how many countries which are part of it. And you have to see from India because we are Indians. So we have to see whether India signed that treaty or not and whether India ratified that treaty or not. And you have to see what is the significance of that treaty. Okay, what is the significance? And now it is 46th meet and why this meet is special that you have to know. And what is the agenda of that meet? Clear? So everything is important from your GS paper 3 under science and technology and as well as environment and ecology. And even Antarctica is in the part of geography, right? So from geography also, GS paper 1, you will be reading this article. So how many subjects we connected? Science and technology, environment and ecology. And as well as your geography. Okay, recently why does the news 46 Antarctic Treaty Consultative Meeting had been held? Where? Kochi. Kochi is in which state? Kochi is in Kerala. Okay, in Kerala it had been happened. And especially they are focusing on Antarctic tourism. So now it is what happened. So whenever people are getting good amount of money, they want to visit each and every place and now they also want to want to explore this Antarctica region. So whenever there is increasing of tourism, then what happened? There will be negative impact on environment for sure. So because of this now, they came up with this 46 Antarctic Treaty Consultative Meet. Okay. So who is the organizer? Who did this uh, event? That is by National Center for Polar and Ocean Research from Goa. So they, they came up with this. 
and who participated all the members who are part of this antarctic treaty so how many members i said in the morning 56 so all these 56 members they joined this meet and if you are talking about this antarctic treaty so it is an international agreement okay because there are 56 countries from different continents are part of so because of this it is international and actually it is focusing on activities that can be done and that cannot be done in antarctica okay so what is the purpose of this treaty so it is focusing on a scientific preserve and ensuring of exclusively for peaceful purposes so actually as i said no we should not go for testing of nuclear weapon or atomic bombs there right so just for peaceful purpose just for science uh, developments in science and technology also only for that reasons we can go for exploring here or we can uh, come up with our own stations like that but it should be for only peaceful purpose and this antarctic treaty designates antarctica as a neutral demilitarized zone so we should be not having any standing military or standing army here so it should be fully demilitarized zone so what are the key provisions of this treaty so first one is we have to go for this antarctica and do research if we want only for peaceful activities not for hazardous activities and next one is we cannot go any we cannot have any military activities there and next one is there should be no fortification weapon testing so all these things had been prohibited and next one is especially for scientific research are to be conducted freely with cooperation and as well as data sharing among signatory nations for example if india went there and india started doing something and india got some evidences so this had to be shared with other countries which are part of this american sorry of this antarctican treaty so as i said there are 56 countries for example india went there and india had its own research center and for example it got ice and in that ice they tested and they got evidence that yes this ice belongs to so and so period so they find some genes so they found some micro microorganisms or like new bacteria discovered or any plant species is coming up okay so if there is any re research which we had or any new points we got so we have to share it to all those other members of this treaty clear and especially nuclear explosions and as well as this ex uh, disposal of this radioactive substances they are 100% prohibited here so what does this meet agenda of this year so first one is they focused on regulation of tourism industry so they came up with new working group and they aimed at formulating regulations and they want to monitor tourism and even they want to protect continent's ecosystem as well and this one is they want to focus on sustainability and environmental protection as well so these are the some important things that you have to remember regarding this antarctica treaty clear say loudly Yes, next topic is the vulnerabilities of India's elderly. So here you have to know about problems of earlier, elder, elder people, and what is this age pyramids, and you have to know what all the measures can be taken by government, and how these older people they will be increasing burden on our present government. So all these things that you have to know from this article. okay in indian conditions there are four vulnerabilities for four ages so first one is restriction activities of day living next one is multi morbidity poverty next one is absence of any income so as well these people they don't have income and next one is they will be having poverty because they are not having money so they will be poor and next one is multi morbidity means there will be having more number of diseases combination of diseases for example if i become old so i may get tb okay i may get hypertension or i may get diabetes mellitus or i may get any infection osteoporosis joint pains everything right so they will be having multi morbidity and even here longitudinal aging survey of india which says that about 20 percentage of elderly population they experienced each of this vulnerabilities 
okay that is the thing and next one is what are the concerns and challenges so first one is yes social cultural mindsets and norms that are labeled are early as burden okay elderly as burden so normally if you are going to any function so i will take in case of mine itself i have a grandpa as i said in the morning so he had fractures multiple fractures on his leg so he can't move now so earlier he used to move but he is not moving now because his age is more than 80 years of age so what happens is recently we had our uh, kids first birthday so for that also my mama didn't attend it because she has to take care of her, him right so if she is coming out no one will be there to take care of him so because of this in society if there is increasing of elderly population we are calling them as burden yes or no so if there is any older person who is there in house means so there will be lots of work will be there so they can't leave them alone and to go outside for shoppings or any social gatherings so because of this here elderly are considered as social burden okay and as one is households with smaller families and their growing number of older people who may suffer from chronic illness so as i said here so elderly people they will be having many diseases so if they are if their hand had been fractured so if they can't move means some kind of infection can be developed right so if you are having like small small kids if if they are having contact with this elderly people so what happen transmission of this microorganisms if diseases infection will happen so this also one important thing that will leads to chronic illness in children and next one is care for seniors at home is growing concern nowadays because of social care and as well as health care developments and even we have to focus on care practices now we are we are getting care takers so if you are paying money on a monthly basis so the care takers will come and they will be taking care of this elderly so now we have that facility but what if in this olden days no In your mother generation or your grandmother generation, so they no one no no one used to come for this care work. Okay, and next one here is there will be also impact on women, especially if elderly persons or women they have further more uh, challenges. So, for example, if they are maybe widowed, like they lost their husband and she become old, so no one will be taking care of. So she will be living alone, and they will be having no income. and they will be having very few assets and sometimes no assets also okay so in this way here they are fully dependent on their children and now those children they are keeping them in old age homes okay so these are the some important things and next one is loss on mercenaries in war zone so in morning class i said that yes russia ukraine war is going on and there are some recruiting agencies you are recruiting indians and they are sending to russia as soldiers and they are attracting people by they will be getting more amount of salary and also they will be getting entitlements in russia like that they will be showing some thing and the people they will be joining here blindly and they are going and and participating in this war so if you see some in uh, some details so over the past year nearly 100 indians they have been recruited by this russian army after being reportedly duped by agents with the lure of money they will be showing like money so they will be getting this much and this much salary like that and even they will be also providing a russian passport okay and indians are going to this region and they are working in this battlegrounds now so if you see the details it says that the distinction between conventional combatants and mercenaries is a fundamental cornerstone of international humanitarian law so actually we are also having standing army but on other side indians they are recruited as russian army so the people who are recruited in the russian army from india they are called as mercenaries so apart from that we are also having fundamental international humanitarian law so whether they are following this or not so based on that we have this difference between actually the combatants who are present and as well as who are who are this mercenaries and this one is combat is nothing but it is a type and the number of armed forces of party to the conflict whereas this mercenary is recruited from a inter uh, third party state unrelated to the conflict okay and this one is mercenaries they usually engage in hostilities 
and they motivated primarily by personal gains and as well as opposed to virtues of patriotism and they associated with regular commandments okay and one of the major challenge of this here is whatever the regime that means whatever the law which is present now it is not having proper and clear unequivocal or comprehensive legal definition of this and next one here is there is also some more issues like domestic laws of most states they do not criminalize this mercenary activities so it is also one cause of concern and in this last year this article says that indian government should be develop a robust policy framework and we have to address this distress of migration and as well as government need to take some steps for taking of strict measures against this human trafficking okay so these are the some important points that you have to remember clear okay now let us go back so i discuss this topic of war zones yeah this article it is about quantum physics so now we are using one more new application of quantum physics that is we are using that in child diaper children diaper so that we can use that for long period of time it will be having more capacity of absorbing so can you tell me some example of best absorbent cotton yes if you want to clean any wounds or clean anything so we will be getting cotton and we will be cleaning because it is a good absorbent so in the states page also i didn't find much important articles yes you can see about this article that is diji yatra you have to know about this it is your homework guys okay so these are the important articles that appeared in our today's hindu newspaper so by this i'm concluding i am going to announce about this current affairs course main sanskrit course and ncert course soon so if you want to take any other courses so you can contact us on this number 8074765513 and even this is whatsapp number you can text me on whatsapp also so that's all students so by this i'm concluding so please do like the class and please do share this class to your friends and don't forget to subscribe to rathod's is academy and if you want to follow us so please download the rathod's is app the link is given in description box thank you so much for watching and we are going to meet in the next class until then keep watching